Welcome, everyone, to another edition of the Ryan and Rush Show. On today's episode, we recap the Oklahoma State loss and look around and see what's going on in the rest of the Big 12. All ahead on the Ryan and Rush Show. And we welcome you back to your source for West Virginia sports. I'm Rambling Rush. He's Moneyline Mac. We are the Ryan and Rush Show, and we're getting right into it. Ryan, uh, tough loss against Oklahoma State. Uh, Oklahoma State was up double digits. Mountaineers, you know, tried to make their comeback, ended up losing the game by seven. Uh, I don't think the score was reflective of the type of comeback the Mountaineers had initially. What are your thoughts from that loss? Yeah, obviously a disappointing road trip going on too, but this is life in the Big 12. You got to move on, get better, and and just just survive it. So we kind of touch on it. We they need to get to eight wins somehow between that and the SEC challenge. So plenty of opportunities left. But I mean, just thinking about the Oklahoma State game. I mean, the pivotal play of the game. Everybody knows. Everybody's seen it all over Twitter, social media. Was a technical foul on Eric Stevenson with seven seventeen left in the second half when it seemed like we took our first lead of the game since like the early stages. It just killed the momentum, and uh, we won't go into the officiating because there's plenty of that going around between our game, Oklahoma State's first game, uh, the game in Lubbock last night. But it, it changed the whole momentum of the game, and then kind of like K-State, our margin of error is so small on the road where we missed too many free throws, we missed 11 free throws again, and we turned it over 15 times. So this is 35 turnovers in two games and what we've missed 29 free throws in two games. It's hard to win on the road that way. Well, I think we learned at least a lot of lessons from the game. Uh, clearly Eric Stevenson is the offense Trey Mitchell too. But if, if both of those guys aren't either in the game or, or, you know, teeing off, then the defense has to step up and make up for those points that, that if, if they're not producing, I think the other thing we learned is obviously, like you said, or this isn't even learned. This is a, no duh thing, but mm -hmm. yeah, if you don't do the basics, right. If you don't do the basic Bob Huggins, uh, avoiding the turnovers, you know, hitting the free throws. I mean, you're, you're just not going to win. You you can't win. Um, and then regards to going back to Eric Stevenson is I think it's kind of funny that he did it to Marcus smart, who, uh, I actually, I mean, <laughs> you were, you were a student manager on the team, uh, when we would play them and you've seen what Marcus smart could do. Uh, that was a lot more than what Eric Stevenson did. And it's not even like he's doing it to another player. I mean, he's doing it to Marcus smart. I mean, these are guys in the NBA that do it all the time. That is a little bit to go into the officiating. Like, come on, like you gotta, yeah. you gotta turn away. You gotta, I mean, it seems so slight too. like, it, it wasn't even caught really in the moment by sometimes I it's think the refs are just looking for something. No doubt. It's a warning, and unfortunately now, Eric has developed a reputation like Gabe last year, and it's so it's funny how similar they are, yet their games are so different in terms of Gabe was an elite defensive player. Obviously, he won Defensive Player of the Year in the Big 12 last year, and we had to have him on the floor for his toughness at, end, at the end of games, and when he fouled out, we lost every game. And when he was there, that's when we had a chance to win those Big 12 games. It's the same thing with Eric. Now, he's not as good as Gabe on the defensive end, but he's obviously a talented offensive player, and he's had experience at the high major closing out games. Uh, you look at South Carolina, they got big wins last year down the stretch in February because Eric made free throws and big shots down the stretch. So it, they're different, but it's also the same in terms of their value to winning basketball games. Well, they're, they're the – I guess, identity of one was Gabe was the identity of the defense and Eric's the identity of the offense. Yeah. They're two different sides of the ball, but it's still an identity for a side of the ball that, uh, well, you need both of them to win a game. Um, yes. And you know, it's, and I know hugs was talking about his press conference. He wasn't happy with Eric, which I, I get it makes sense it is, you know, he's like, he'll no longer be a mountaineer if he keeps acting up like that, which is, it was just such a slight incident for that to be such a big deal, but you're right. It's, it's more of the reputation than it is the act. And I love the fire that Eric Stevenson provides. I mean, we need that. You're right. It's, it's that, uh, you know, the Gabe giving the torch to Eric type of thing, but it just needs to be brought down, I guess, a level, like just yeah. a level you got to stay in the game because his value, while he does bring up the intensity, he does bring the energy. If you're sitting on the bench, I mean, uh, 
you know, you can't bring that forward and you can't, you know, also we need you to score as well. So it, it just, it has to be brought down a notch. It, it, it does, but it's also at the same time, it's just kind of that both sides are wrong type of thing where it's like, come on refs, like this is big 12 play. Let them, let them play it out. It's, it's no, the, no doubt. It's the D league to the D league or the G league. Now it's the G league to the G league, the big 12, it's big tele conference. So it, it, it's also ironic because Gabe got thrown out of the game last year in Stillwater. And I mean, I thought it was weak last year when he got thrown out of the game, but he got the game was over when he got thrown out and he got teased because of his reputation, just like Eric. So unfortunately for Eric, these guys are going to be looking for him. It's in the memo, the big 12. They all, these referees talk to one another. So unfortunately for Eric, he, like you said, he keep the intensity, keep the the fire that's what drives him it's what made him a division one college basketball player and a good one but take it down a notch because you're hurting your team i mean 17 points in 25 minutes if he goes north of 30 minutes i mean he probably has 25 30 points i think with the way he was shooting it the other night besides the the obvious concerns of free throw shooting and turnovers and just basically well just doing the basics right what other concerns do you have about this team a consistent third guy to score with Eric and Trey. Um, going on the road, it's hard. It's uh, I feel like the role guys can always get it going at home because you got the home crowd behind you. But that's what makes the great players great is when they can go on the road and have a career night. We need Emmett to be more consistent in terms of um, he's he's he was in foul trouble last or uh, against Oklahoma State, and he kind of has been up and down a little bit since the knee injury. We get him going back. I, I think he can provide that third score to go with Trey and um, Eric. I agree with you. I think the third score is huge, uh, especially with not having someone like Gabe on defense where, you know, mm -hmm. there are probably going to be times where, you know, last year it felt like Gabe, you know, step up, take a charge. Let's get the ball back and, and score, prevent them from scoring. Right. And, and this year it's, our defense is sometimes been a little bit concerning or a little lackluster to the extent where we act like we can outscore them, but we can't. So I think to do Correct. that is that third score does need to step up. And my is Emmett. Yeah, that would be a great guy to do it. But my, my concern is to take it a little bit of a step further is the, the person playing the five JBJ Wagi, um, Sue Nick was in the game. It, it's, you can definitely tell Hugs is looking for, I mean, all three big body guys, but Hugs is lo still looking for that guy who's going to play with the big body. Because I, that's, we were talking about it to start the season. We were talking about it with Ethan is it's when in doubt, those shots aren't going from mid range or uh, three points is it's nice to know that, Hey, just get it down low and have that back to the basket center. And we both agree that Jimmy Bell Jr. JBJ is more than capable of doing that. It's it's, but, to, needs to play a little bigger and be that third yeah. score or be that one to bail the offense out. Yeah. And we, I, we said this in the preseason, Hugs is going to throw the ball inside. He threw the ball inside last year to Gabe, who's a complete undersized uh, five man. He threw the ball to him. He threw it to Polly. He threw it even Damon when Damon was in, I mean, he's going to throw the ball inside. That's what he's done his whole career. So, Jimmy just needs to keep uh, getting better and better. Same with Mo. And you mm -hmm. know what? Pat, I thought Pat was great the other night. I thought Pat came yeah. in and provided a huge spark with three offensive rebounds. And Hugs talked about it. Uh, you never know when your number is going to be called. So kudos to Pat coming in. I think he's going to earn himself some more playing time uh, going forward with his energy and uh, kind of effort on the defensive end and on the offensive glass. Well, I remember when Pat came in, I think for the first time this season, I forget which game it was, second, third game, we were there. And I remember seeing him, I'm like, wow, this guy's on our bench and he's this big. And hey, it's, it's, he, we saw it. He's definitely more than capable. And we saw him come in at crunch time in the game and he played well. He played balls to the wall. So I, I don't care if it's by committee. I don't care which number five decides to step up and, and take over. I don't, but it, it needs to happen. It, it just, it's just a matter of fact, it's, it's, we got to get our third score from somewhere. And I think, you know, of course Emmett, but there are just going to be times shots aren't falling. And I would rather yeah. our third score be from, from down low the five than, than anywhere else. So 
you know, Hugs is kind of doing this, you know, op- not an open competition, but a just which one's going to go step up and click. Who's going to step up? Yeah. 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 So we'll find out. Kansas is a great way to see who wants to step up. Yeah, no doubt. And uh, I don't know what the report's going to be. This kind of just broke right before we came on. There's going to be a ruling on the, what was it, the appeal process for Jose Perez. So there's a potential scenario where he could be available Saturday for no the Kansas kidding. game. So uh, it would be another guy that just uh, provide a little bit of spark off the bench, a rotational piece in case we get in foul trouble. Because what we've learned through two games in the Big 12, we're going to get in foul trouble. So it's honestly, every game I've watched in the Big 12, it's so physical this year with how good these teams are. Every possession matters because everybody's an NCAA tournament team and there's such an emphasis on each possession that these it's the best league in America and uh, it, it's really, really physical right now. They sent out a memo that they need to uh, cut it back a little bit. Well, I think it was even more physical during the week than it was on the weekend. Which I, is I agree with that. I agree. Yeah. I mean, you, this is get used to seeing in the, the second half, you know, around the five, yeah. six minute mark, both teams in the bonus plus. So it, very interesting. Um, Kind of going like in, the old big East. It did. It yeah. did. It, it did. From a it, physicality there, standpoint. It's, it's, I mean, I don't think there's a better conference to get you ready for the NBA. Um, no doubt. But kind of talking about that and um, you know, we'll, we'll do our Kansas preview uh, tomorrow, but so far, you know, we had two away games, was really hoping to we were both really hoping we'd at least split you know go one and one on the road end up going zero and two the they, the games were both kind of reverses of each other we talked about it with Kansas State um in our recap a couple days ago with that was hey we get out to this big lead um and we can't hold on to it and we end up losing in overtime the the Oklahoma State game was the hey we're behind double digits and we you know caught up enough and then we do stupid stuff at the end and end up losing that game so I think there's this, what type of team, what, what is still our identity is, are we going to be the team that, you know, can come back and win? Or are we going to be the team that can hold on to a lead and win? Or are we going to do a little bit of both? Or is it just going to be a grinded out game the whole time? And we slide it up because I, I, we, we can't keep doing this. Like if we're 24 in the Ken Palm and, you know, 11 in the Ned and what this in the RPI, this in the BPI, that's nice. It's great. It's definitely going to help when it comes to March time, but it's, we are going to get to that point where the number one stat and the number one rating is, do you have a W or an L next to that opponent? And I just, I love to know your thoughts, especially being on, you know, a former staff member on this coaching staff is, is how do you step into that identity? How do you figure out not to keep just stumbling over this stuff over and over again? I think the main thing, well, I think we need to uh, get off to better starts uh, like K-State. That was a great start, but we need to maintain. Uh, I think it's more sustainable to get off to good starts, kind of just grind it out into a nice victory rather than get off to a slow start and uh, get it going in a comeback fashion, kind of a hectic uh, comeback. But it's uh, the main, the most important thing in the Big 12 with how good these teams are, everybody's in the top 50. You have to protect home court. We dropped two on the road. Okay. We, we all of us came into this going, hey, we want to split. Okay. We didn't get the split, but you cannot let that carry over into Morgantown on Saturday night where you're going to have 14 1 in the Coliseum. It's going to be rocking. So nobody else is really winning on the road either. I, I know Kansas and K State won last night, but uh, I think on Saturday, the home teams won four and one. So, and Texas is the, is the outlier where they've won on the road and lost at home. So it's kind of been a reverse for them. But majority, 80%, 75 to 80% of these games, the home team's going to win because of how good the atmospheres are too and how good the teams are. Which definitely the positive from this, right, is we, we still can hold on to whole home court. Um, you know, you said you brought this up earlier. We're about – we're eight wins away from – Eight wins, a, yes. Yep, tournament bid. And that includes Auburn. The, the SEC uh, Big 12 Challenge. So hopefully, you know, Correct. one of those is there. We got our home court. We probably need to sneak one or two on the road. And then, you know, we always have the Big 12 tournament. Hopefully at least, you know, win the first round of that. But these, I mean, this Kansas game is, we were worried going, I don't want to say worried, 
because of everything we just said is, you know, we're still in the driver's seat, right? But this, this Kansas game is being a little more, you know, serious than we originally thought that if you split or, you know, won both of those games on the road. So like I said, we'll preview that tomorrow, but some, some good news kind of going into that game and, you know, how we stack up against the rest of the big 12 is one is don't forget who beat um, who almost beat Kansas last week was Oklahoma state. And we saw how we yeah. played against Oklahoma state. And what did Kansas state just do last night to Texas? They crushed Texas. Killed look them. how well, look how well we played Kansas state. So, you know, it's, you know, that, and that was a home game for Texas. We were at Kansas state and I get their students weren't there and, and all that, but I mean, there is something to be said about there. Like, on through these statistics, through this, the, the Ken Palm, through the net is we are in line. Like we, we are on the right path, but we, if we can't close out games, Ryan, I mean, that that's really where this, can we close games out? And yeah, and I it, think that's it, the difference. Yeah, no. And Saturday night, you're, you can't ask for a better situation in terms of you're getting Kansas off two nail biter victories, controversial wins. Um, and they are coming from Lubbock, which is the farthest town, college town, in the Big 12. So this is a back-to-back road spot for Kansas. They've won seven in a row, kind of feeling themselves coming in here compared to the Mountaineers who backs against the wall. This is the only place that Bill Self has a losing record at as well in Morgantown in the Big 12. You can't ask for a better spot. This is a I great agree. spot to get a – Great signature win in front of your home crowd. The place is going to be going crazy. And we'll touch on the, how we beat Kansas tomorrow. But from a situation on Saturday, you can't ask for a better setup. I agree. And I, I would even go as far to say is tournament teams figure out how to win the game we're playing yes. on Saturday. And I think that's what it comes to. Um, so it definitely, as you said, we'll we'll go, we'll really dive deep into that Kansas game. Uh, tomorrow, but it's, uh, I, I agree. It's, I have, I always get great feelings when Kansas comes to Morgantown in early January and yep. the weather's pretty gross too. So we, we know those travel delays when the other teams come in and can, can definitely help us. Um, no doubt. Going into talking about the rest of the big 12, we have two more matchups tonight, Ryan, uh, TCU and Baylor are playing Iowa state and Oklahoma are playing. So we'll definitely kind of get the rest of the feel, the rest of the temperature in the big 12, but already, through the first week, um, what is your do, does your rankings do your tiers change at all? What what have you learned? Any any adjustments to to your Big Twelve standings from from week one? I'm glad I moved Texas out of the Kansas tier because they're not on Kansas's level. Mm-hmm. Kansas is clear cut number one, and the team that I've been kind of uh, labeling as potentially the most overrated team in the Big Twelve, Baylor. I think there's some truth to that. So obviously we'll see what happens tonight because we touch on how Mountaineers will be desperate on Saturday night, Saturday night against Kansas. You got two desperate spots here or not desperate. It's only game number two, but back to the wall spot in terms of Baylor's 0-1 coming back to Waco at home. And they're taking on a good TCU team who's won 10 in a row. And I don't think it's a really good matchup for Baylor either because of how physical TCU is compared to Baylor who's kind of soft um, in the front court this year compared to previous years with Vital and JTT. And then on the other side, the other matchup, you got Oklahoma who just dropped a home game on Saturday. They got another home game against Iowa State. Um, if you're the Sooners, you can't drop back-to-back home games. So this is kind of a, a, a not a desperate spot, but hey, man, we got to get this one tonight and get right and get even in the Big 12. So the Big 12 is a gauntlet. Basically. Yeah, so you know what the way I like to think of it? It's 18 games. It's like a round of golf. You're going to have your ups and downs. You just got to get one. to the end. <laughs> I like that. You just have to have gotta, more better holes than bad holes. You got to get to the 19th hole where the fun happens. The March Madness and the like clubhouse. <laughs> I like that. The Big 12 is the the golf. And mm. ideally, the, the SEC is right that that uh, you're, you're taking a break at the, the clubhouse, right? No doubt. Yeah, that's the turn. The SEC challenge. Yeah, the SEC, <laughs> it's the turn. I love it. Yep. Um, we'll we'll be back with you guys tomorrow. Preview the Kansas game. Uh, big week. Um, of course, what comes after Kansas too is doing a little forecasting. Ryan Baylor, uh, the Jalen Bridges uh, revenge game. So, a lot, a lot, uh, a lot can be forgotten here uh, in these next two games with with no West doubt. Virginia and what they're capable of. And like I said, it's you know we're being a little tough on them, but it's it's the fact that we just don't want to fall into what we were last year, right? Is, you know, 
the we look good with excuse me it's on paper we look good with the close losses and the points and helping us with March madness but like I said I mean close only counts in horseshoes and hand grenades right got to got to win it all so got to win those games but yeah anyway, no doubt right- it and uh and hugs uh we're, we're not being hard compared to how hard hugs and the staff is on them right now so they they're gonna get right they'll, they'll be ready to go Saturday night everybody fair enough fair enough any final thoughts Ryan go Mountaineers we'll see you tomorrow love y'all have a good one